Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is putting the foot chart, which we don't have yet, but it, it just kind of helps with the visualizing. I'm putting it at a 45 degree angle. <laughs> at a 45 degree angle to myself. Okay, so if you step up onto the middle one, yep, and then we're, we're going to do this next term. You can do that and then step out onto the red one. Yeah, that's it. Um, oh. Okay, so now you can see that you're standing 45 degrees to me, which makes it easy for me to get the right angle, but it also makes it easy for me to have a consistent angle. So what we want to do is have it consistent all the time. The more consistent it is, the sooner the children will be able to do it for themselves because they'll know exactly what it's meant to feel like because you've done it the same every time. Okay. So now I'm going to take Miriam's hands, sorry, my hands are so cold, and just make sure that she's nice and relaxed. I'm going to hold the violin here in the middle, and these three fingers are ready on her shoulder. I think this shoulder rest, which is a little bit big for the violin, because the violin is too small for you, <laughs> I'm going to just bring it down a little bit this way. Remember that this is a jaw rest, not a chin rest. All right, so we really want her chin to be kind of centered on the violin. All right, so I'm going to take her hand again. She's just going to stay facing this way. I'm going to put... Now, Harry, can you come around the violin? I'm going to put it up here. Now, what I saw everybody doing just now, come all the way around. What I saw everybody doing now was putting it fairly high up on the shoulder. Um, and that's obvious, you know, that's obviously my fault. But we don't want it too high on the shoulder because it's not really a very ergonomic way to play the violin. So if you think of this button here, it's going to come, if, if, you're face, if you're at 45 degrees to me and you're standing like this, I'm just going to come straight in with this button here into your neck like that. Okay. Right? So I'm going to come in like this. Now we talked about the, this being on top of the shoulder crease. Yeah. Right? Oh, right? So it's the edge of the violin the that, that kind of comes to the crease. Right? Certainly not the middle. This is not a good way to play. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't be able to reach it. So I've got it here like this. I'm pushing it in quite firmly into uh, Miriam's shoulder. And then I'm going to get you to turn around and say hello, scroll, and drop your chin straight down. Okay? Now, if you look here, you can see that if there were strings, her chin is lined up straight up the middle of the of the violin. That's basically how we want it. If she's comfortable like that, we're happy with that. Okay. Also, if you come around here, you'll see that the violin is kind of sloped a little bit. You know, it's not quite 45 degrees, it's not quite flat, but it's tipping this way. Um, Miriam's head is straight up and down. All right, we want her head straight this way. It's not tipping over. All that's happened is she's turned towards you and she's dropped her chin straight down. Both shoulders are nice and relaxed, which is an advantage of the foam violin. Um, and she looks very comfortable. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, thank you.